Hi, it's Greg Gunnert. This week, we're going inside the markets. Uh, S&P is up 12. Uh, the real laggard, if you want to call it that, uh, the NASDAQ is up eight. So uh, yeah, things are, things are good, almost too good, I would say. Hi, it's Greg Gorner, Vice President and Senior Investment Advisor at Canaccord Genuity Wealth Management and Gorner Wealth Management. Now here, welcome to the channel where we help you make sense out of the financial world. Now, if you like my content, like my videos, please feel free to click the subscribe button there. You know, you have free will, but it really does help. Now today, I'm going to be joined by Canaccord Genuity Managing Director of Advisory Services, Kevin Vandermeer, for our Inside the Market segment. Kevin, how are you? Good, good, good to be back. Good to chat again. Really, really appreciate you taking the time. Now, let, let's walk through a couple of themes that we've seen in the, in the marketplace over the past little bit. You know, we've had Martin Roberge talk about where, you know, uh, maybe speed bumps ahead with the marketplace. Uh, we know Tony Dwyer has made some comments about, you know, where we are in this gentle rollover that we're starting to see in the markets. But from, you know, 30,000 foot level, what are you seeing in the markets right now that's interesting to you? Uh, well, a couple of things. One, we've just finished earnings season, and uh, that's you know obviously where all of the companies report, um, you know, update investors and report their their earnings. And we've just finished kind of Q2, and uh, the earnings continue to come in strong. So and continue to beat um, analyst uh, expectations. So, in terms of you know providing support to the market. Um, what you do want to hear is obviously that, you know, companies are, are positive about, you know, kind of reopening positive about the economy and, um, you know, getting an update from them it has been good. So I would say that's positive. Um, you know, typically this period where you kind of go through the summer, um, from a seasonality standpoint, often is uh, sort of the softer part. Uh, of the market and, and usually markets kind of go sideways to down a little bit over the summer. And uh, quite honestly, we're not seeing that this time. The, the you know, the earnings are so strong. And, um, you know, we're sort of at all time highs here. Um, S&P is within, you know, a couple of points of all time highs. TSX is at all time highs. Um, you know, TSX is up 15%, uh, 16% year to date. Uh, S&P is up 12 uh, the real laggard, if you want to call it that, uh, the NASDAQ is up eight. So, uh, yeah, things are things are good, almost too good, I would say. Yeah, no, no, that's a good point because, you know, we're starting to see potentially inflation rearing its ugly head. Now, we did uh, have Janet Yellen uh, come out the other day and comment on that, uh, you know, she was comfortable seeing inflation a little bit higher. I don't want to paraphrase what, what she said. Um, you know, higher for longer. We don't know the Fed has their benchmarks and, uh, you know, they have um, 2% long-term inflation target um, and also they have their uh, employment mandate as well. But, you know, how does that feed into the marketplace from your point of view? Yeah, like, uh, you know, the Fed, uh, you know, uh, is, is quite happy to let, you know, the economy run uh, a little bit hotter than maybe we would normally be, ex you know, um, comfortable with or, or expect expected to. So I think from, you know, the, the vantage point of, you know, equity investors, we can be fairly confident that, you know, the Fed will be continue to be there uh, and very supportive. They they want to err kind of on the on the side of too much inflation rather than kind of pulling uh, support away uh, from the market. So, you know, that I think is another reason why uh, markets are where they are. Um, certainly, uh, employment looks good. I mean, we're hearing a lot about how, uh, you know, restaurants, uh, you know, whether they're, um, you know, McDonald's is paying bonuses to try to get people to come back to work. Um, you're hearing stories of, of restaurants in, in New York uh, or, you know, in Florida where they're opening up. They just can't get staff. Um, and uh, so they're, they're having to pay up. So those are going to be some of the, the, the structural challenges that the economy is going to um, face as it, as it opens up. But it looks pretty, uh, pretty positive. And, uh, you know, I think uh, it, CEOs are, are, are 
recognizing that you know debt is cheap and that you know the Fed is going to be accommodative for probably longer. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Uh, you know, just jumping back to the uh, hospitality sector, the, uh, Morgan Stanley, I believe it was, came up with some uh, interesting reports on the weekend from Open Table, just on, um, you know, what restaurant reservations were starting to look like. You know, starting with Florida and Texas, but definitely, as you mentioned, moving moving north to Florida. Uh, sorry, to uh, to New York, and uh, you know, I get the feeling we've all been all stuck inside for uh, you know good eighteen months, and uh, we're ready to go out and uh, and spend some time with some people that we like, uh, rather yeah. than you and I spending time like this, you know, on camera, yeah. which uh, all of us have been doing for the longest period of time, which is great, but it's just not the same as uh, is getting together, having a glass of wine, and uh, you know, really rem- remembering why we like each other again. So, <laughs> um, you know, I. I I kind of wonder if we're going to kind of go back into a, an economy or just a world where we're going to have this bifurcation where on one day we're all going to be running out, having fun with friends, drinking a bunch of wine, eating a bunch of food, and the next day realizing that, hey, it's been 18 months and we put the COVID-20 on and we're going to go to the gym the next day. We're going to, it's going to be the switch between New Year's Eve and New Year's Day back and forth for the next six months when we're open. But that's just my, <laughs> my thought. Um, hey, now with a good market or a hot market, uh, always comes excesses. And when we talk about excesses, why don't we talk about uh, meme stocks? Meme stocks, what are they? Um, yeah, yeah, why sure. should it matter or, or why shouldn't <laughs> it matter? Let's talk about that. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, certainly we would not, uh, you know, as, as institutional investors or, or you know, uh, custodians of uh, people's money. You mean people uh, are saying? Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we... Uh, you know, I think you've got to make a distinction between sort of mean stocks and and in buying, you know, uh, uh, real companies with real earnings in in client portfolios that uh, you know you want to hold for the long term. But uh, mean stocks are really, um, you know, stocks that uh, it, you know a collection of uh, retail investors and and that. Um, you know, maybe are, are, are on certain blogs, uh, will will sort of all identify, and um, typically they target stocks that have large short positions. So, if uh, if you have a stock, uh, as we've seen uh, AMC uh, recently, you know this is a um, uh, basically a company that runs. Uh, theaters, so movie theaters, and obviously there hasn't been much business there. So institutional investors um, and hedge funds have shorted these stocks, thinking that you know there may be um, challenge, there may be restructuring, and Say what you've least. seen, yeah, and what you've seen is uh, retail investors um, uh, co- sort of collectively going after these stocks and buying them indiscriminately to to drive the price up so that institutional investors have to uh, cover their short positions. So essentially buy back in, which only further exasperates the move in, um, in, in the share price. And so you're seeing these really big outsized movements in, in stocks that really are not necessarily investable. So um, that is in a, in a kind of a qu- in a quick nutshell what a meme stock is and a meme as we all know is sort of like a cartoon with a saying and uh so they've you know with maybe sort of something that's posted on uh, instagram or on a, on a blog uh people will just simply buy these stocks based on a one page cartoon or or an idea and that's why they're called mean stocks but the fundamentals behind them aren't strong and they're being sort of a, you know, hedge funds are sort of being attacked on the short position, forcing them to buy back in. Yeah, because I mean, I mean, when you look at, it, I mean, the hedge funds, and uh, you know, if you look at them, I just off the top of my head, take say something like GameStop. Uh, I can't for the life of me think of why you that's a viable business going forward. You know, I have a you know a, a teenage son, and there's no chance he's going to the store to buy a game. I mean, that 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 business was like 20 years ago. That's like blockbuster videos 20 years ago. You and Netflix came and took it over. So unless something drastically changes that sector, that's not about to uh, uh, to change. And but you've got the situation right now where yeah, there's big short positions, and uh, you know shorts do have to buy back their their positions. 
and if there's enough volume to come in, um, you know, your, your point is well taken that the, these are companies that uh, probably are not viable businesses. I don't want to go too far on a limb, but I'm 99% sure that it's not going to end well for them. Um, but in the meantime, there are some people um, making some trades, but I think they really have to understand that what they're doing there is speculating yeah. uh, rather than investing. And I think that's sometimes where the confusion ends up, that speculating is perfectly valid. I'm not going to say don't do it. Um, you know, I'm not your mother. Uh, but don't confuse that with investing and, and just assume that at the end of the day, many of these things are probably going to go to zero. Yeah. And I think it's important, like, if you don't have... Uh a structure in which you're making a rational investment decision. You know, you're just buying it because, you know, somebody's told you it's a good idea and, and it doesn't necessarily mean to be, have to be a meme stock, but you know, it, then, then you don't really have a rational reason or, or know when to sell it. Um, yeah. So you bought it, you know, through a tip or speculating and it goes up a lot, you know, when do you sell it? Um, and that's, you know, that's the conversation I often have with, friends that are not in the industry where they may be buying these or saying, well, what, you know, where do I get out? And I said, well, what was your, what was your process for investing? What was your rationale? How did you arrive at this? And they say, well, you know, uh, I didn't really have one. Well, uh, then it becomes hard to know when to get out if you're just um, speculating. So, yeah. And, it, and in fact, the, the SEC in the U.S. just recently announced that they're going to start to look at um, some of the trading here to make sure that, you know, there's not manipulation of, of uh, stocks. So the SEC's job is really to, to make sure that the markets operate um, in a fair and uh, an orderly manner and that, you know, nobody can come in and sort of manipulate um, share prices and make sure that, you know, every investor that, that enters the market um, is treated fairly. And so, uh, yeah, so the, they're sort of looking at this, but there certainly is sort of this David and Goliath um, yeah. type approach. You know, it's the little guy against the big guy and sort of everybody's cheering for the, uh, you know, the, the small retail investor who's, who's benefiting. But, um, you know, this is not what you want to be doing with your retirement funds. This is not what you want to be doing with your long term safe money by any measure. No, no. And, you know, once again, when we, ever we talk about something like that, I think uh, caveat emptor is so important. Um, hey, thanks for taking the time. Why don't we leave it there? Um, great insight, uh, as usual. You know, come back and join me in a, in a few months. I'd really like to see you again. Kevin sure. Vandermeer, thank you. Thank you.